majestad, sea muy bienvenido a España. Uh, I say this in Spanish because I know he understands very well. And if you allow me, I'll continue in English because if His Majesty speaks in Dutch, I will not be able to follow. <laughs> I trust you had a good visit to Puerto Llano today. Vicepresidenta, tercera del gobierno, ministra para la transición ecológica y reto demográfico, minister of climate and energy policy of the Netherlands, presidenta de CSIC, uh, embajadores, Señoras y señores, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. I am especially pleased to welcome uh, His Majesty the King of the Netherlands, dear William Alexander, to Spain for such a special visit, and to do so here at the Royal Botanic Gardens, quite an adequate setting for both the theme of your visit and our shared concern for the well-being of our planet's nature and biodiversity. It is also a special occasion as this year marks the 375th anniversary of our kingdoms, Spain and the Netherlands, since we established diplomatic relations. But I don't want to let pass another anniversary. Uh, only a few days ago, Your Majesty celebrated 10 years of reign uh, in the Netherlands as head of state and monarch a symbol of unity and continuity, as you yourself said in your opening speech. I would like to extend you our warmest congratulations for these 10 years. Your Majesty, you were well aware of Spain's affection, respect and admiration uh, for your country, friend and ally, which we, uh, with which we share deep historical ties and maintain positive relations covering practically all areas, economic, commercial, security, defense, culture, uh, industry. This excellent cooperation, which demonstrates uh, our common understanding, interests, and aspirations, also extends to the energy sector, which brings us together in a new step of bilateral collaboration, one that places us at the forefront of one of the greatest challenges of our time. We are here today to address a topic of vital importance for our future and that of generations to come. The development of a key energy carrier to make the energy transition possible, viable, affordable and safe. That carrier is renewable hydrogen. In this regard, the message coming out of Europe is loud and clear. The 21st century development will depend and be driven by renewables, efficiency, electrification, and innovative technologies such as hydrogen, which already plays a leading role in our energy system. It is a highly versatile energy vector and a key to decarbonizing our economies, industries, and transport. Now the challenge ahead of us is to make the hydrogen we already use 100% renewable. The prospects for this development are broad and extend well into the next 30 years. According to the International Energy Agency, we should expect to see its use increase sixfold and reach 10% of total final energy consumption by 2050 from low carbon sources. In addition, the IEA estimates that renewable hydrogen will account for one third of the fuel used in land transport uh, by 2050 and up to 60% in maritime transport. This commitment to renewable hydrogen responds to both environmental and strategic implications. In these times of uncertainty and volatility, also in the energy sector, it is necessary to develop an energy transition that enhances our energy autonomy without creating new technological and material dependencies, i.e. to enhance our strategic autonomy. Therefore, in the full potential of renewable hydrogen is to be realized, it is essential to address all these challenges ahead. The mass production of renewable hydrogen from renewable energies and its efficient storage are technological and economic factors 
that require special attention. In addition, we need to develop an adequate distribution infrastructure in order to enable the transport and supply of hydrogen nationally and internationally. To this end, it is essential to establish alliances between partner countries. In this respect, our country has shown itself to be on, on this path of collaborating and understanding both with the agreement between Portugal, France, Germany and Spain for the development of the H2MED across the Mediterranean and with the recent signing last February of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Netherlands and Spain one with which our two countries hope to deepen mutual cooperation and the development of a European hydrogen market in line with the ambitious set out in the REP Power EU plan in order to meet the objectives of the Paris Agreement. These initiatives fully align us with European policies and objectives. Europe has taken a significant step in establishing the European Hydrogen Strategy, aimed fundamentally at setting the necessary guidelines to develop the role that clean hydrogen in, has in reducing emissions and promoting an efficient economy in the European Union. There is so much that we all still need to do. All this technology needs to be further developed to become a widespread reality in our economic sectors. The best example of this is the creation of the so-called hydrogen valleys, which locally integrate the supply, distribution, logistics, and demand for renewable hydrogen to further increase knowledge and present a viable proposal about this present and future vector. In short, hydrogen plays an important role in the transition to a low carbon economy. Its versatility, decarbonization potential, and ability to drive the development of key sectors make it a significant part of our energy future. We must seize this opportunity to build a more sustainable world in a realistic way. We are confident that with the joint efforts of all stakeholders and a broad and loyal collaboration between partner countries, hydrogen can be a tangible and transformative reality. It is our responsibility to leave a positive legacy for future generations, and hydrogen can help us achieve this. Thank you all very much. Welcome again, Your Majesty. And I, I wish you all a great symposium this afternoon, and tomorrow we have a very interesting and important visit in Amphitheus. Thank you all very much.